اطلب العلم اخي فهو درب به نور بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد In this lesson we'll be looking at the history of the four khalifs so we're only going to look at uh, the history of the first khalifa an introduction first of all and then we're only going to look at the life of Abu Bakr inshallah radiallahu anhu um, as we know the the rightly gui guided khalifs or khulafa al-rashidun you probably heard um, this in you probably heard it in the a hadith and you've probably heard it before this time so it was used by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa so he said alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat al-khulafa al-rashidin al-mahdiyin and ba'd he said follow my sunnah and the sunnah of the khalifas will come after me who are guided okay they're guided so um, there were also some other indications to like what order they will come and also who would be the first one so the uh, the rightly guided khalif or the khulafa rashidin is referred to the leaders after muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam um they were called the khulafa rashidin and they are as you already know abu bakr umar abu bakr as-sadiq umar ibn khattab Uthman ibn Affan, Ali ibn Abi Talib. So Medina was their capital until Ali ibn Abi Talib uh, changed it to Kufa. Okay, so this is more like, inshallah, a history lesson than, um, than like a hard soft lesson. So I want you really to get like the, you probably still heard a lot about Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, but I want you to kind of get a picture of. The, the history, inshallah, so we can build on that. Can you hear, you can hear me, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, man, we can hear you. So, um, how long was the, uh, the reign of these four khalifs? It was for, Islam obviously spread to the borders of the Arabian Peninsula and it was for 31 years. For 31 uh, years. So if you look at this map, you would see how far uh, the Muslims got to uh, the four Khalifas, you know, how much land they conquered. OK, so if, you, if we're looking at this map, uh, the first color, uh, the top, which is the green, the green is the time of Umar ibn uh, Abu Bakr al-Sadiq. OK, so he conquered most of, uh, obviously, or Jazeera al Arab, Arab, complete Jazeera al Arab, the Arabian Peninsula. And the part in green, but it's got a little shade to it, it's got some bumps, a texture to it. So that's Bilal al Sham. He also conquered that as well. So this green part, um, it's all, or what kind of different, would that be light green? Okay, anyway, this whole area is was conquered by Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Um, so obviously these openings, the conquests were ongoing. So you might start at the time of Abu Bakr, but then later finished at the time of Umar al-Uthman. So that was the area Abu Bakr conquered. Uh, the next color is the, the lightish, uh, is that green, um, which is Umar ibn Khattab. So Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, in his time, it reached, uh, the lands of the Muslims reached, uh, went into, Damascus, so Syria, Quds, which is uh, Jerusalem, Palestine, went into Egypt, so all in Egypt, you see Masr here. He went into also Azerbaijan, uh, parts of the, which, which was the Soviet Union, or parts of, uh, yeah, the Soviet Union, so Darbistan, uh, Khorasan, it's probably, it, Khorasan is, is Iran, isn't it? such as Stan. Okay, it goes all the way back, all the way up to Kabul, which is um, Afghanistan. At the time of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. Okay? And uh, no, most of, you can see, no, North uh, Africa. And then again, at the time of uh, Uthman ibn Affan, that extends further into Northern Africa. So you got Sudan, uh, 
and then you've got other countries on that line you guys probably know the you probably know the cal the, the map more than me uh that northern african countries i don't know if it's what countries would this be Who knows their map very well? Would it be countries like Libya or like, like Libya? Libya? Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, so those Arab countries, uh, Libya, I don't know if Algeria, Morocco, if it's included. But in that, uh, we understand that's why most of it's uh, populated by, by Arabs. Although some of them, they consider themselves as Barbar. Like the Moroccans, are, they're they're barbar, but we're gonna we'll cover that inshallah in the future. Um, at the time of yeah, so it goes into further into uh, this side as well. So going past, um, yeah, you can say basically most of the Middle East, Middle East, okay. And then when Uth Uth uh, Ali radiallahu anhu came, he went into Ard Sint, which is uh, Asia, he went into Asia, uh, or you can say the subcontinent countries, subcontinent uh, countries, Asia. So basically, um, you can see here it goes into parts of India as well. So most of the, I think you will know better than me is that is that Bangladesh? I don't know parts of Pakistan. I don't know. You 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 tell me, inshallah. I have to look at the other map. I was looking at the other map. But anyway, you have an idea of how far. So most of the Middle East and even some of the Far East was conquered at the time of the Khulafa Rashidin, just within 30, 30 years. That's how far expanded. That's why it was considered as the fastest growing empire, the strongest, strongest, one of the strongest empires throughout um, history. Okay. Okay, moving on from that, if you look at Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, how did he become a leader? You might have heard from the Shia that Ali didn't get his right and this and this. And, but looking at the books and the, what happened, you can clearly see, for example, even when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even before Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was buried, they went to a place called uh, Saqif al Sa'ad. So the Ansar were already there, and Ansar, they were, they, were trying to, they were discussing who should be the leader. So Abu Bakr and Umar said we should go there immediately. So uh, they went together because they need to take part in this, and obviously, we're going to see how Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam kind of hinted many times that Abu Bakr should be the next leader. Um, but they go there and Umar ibn Khattab, um, he prepared some speech in his head. He was saying, I was, he was, he was saying I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this. And then when he came, Abu Bakr was there. As Abu Bakr start, start to speak before him and as he said Abu Bakr spoke in a very good way. So the Ansar was saying we should be the leaders, <coughs> the Muhajirun. They said we should be the leaders. Leadership for should be for the Quraysh, and uh, there was some ahadith that they referred to. Anyway, with this consultation or this uh, debate, so one of them said, "You know, we are." They were praising each other. One of the companions he was praising the Ansar, and he's, but then at the end, what happened was um, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu he grabbed the hand of Umar ibn Khattab. And was it Sa'ad ibn Waqas? He grabbed another companion's hand and he said, Choose one of these two men. Then Ibn al Khattab radiallahu anhu, he completely refused. He said, No. So they started to argue again. And then he said, well, I'm going to give my alliance to Abu Bakr. Okay, he's the best of us. And then everybody else followed and they, um, they also pledged their alliance to Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr became the leader like that with the consultation of the most, uh, yani the highest companions in terms of authority. They all agreed there and there. There was no dispute after that. They all agreed. There was some disagreement at the beginning, but they all agreed. Okay, he said that Ali ibn Abi Talib was away. And then he had some feelings towards Abu Bakr because he thought he should have taken part in it. And he thought he had some right because he was from the family of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he said, even the hadith in Bukhari says that he actually spent, he was spending time looking after his wife Fatima radiallahu anha because she was, she was sick. And then later on, 
Also, Fatima was a little bit angry with Abu Bakr because she wanted some inheritance of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's, uh, what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left behind. But he told her that the prophets, um, they don't leave behind dinar and dirham. No. What they leave behind, it goes to the Muslims. That's and he, he, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith. Anyway, later on, Ali ibn Abi Talib, he comes and then he he gives an excuse why he didn't come and he apologizes. And then Abu, Abu Bakr speaks to him nicely and says, you are from the family of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it was, was settled. But the Shia like to make it into something else. Anyway, when he, the first speech he gave, he said, okay, so he said, I've been given authority over you and I'm not the best of you. If I do well, help me. And if, we, if I do wrong, set me right. Sincere regard for the truth is loyalty. And disregard for truth is treachery. The weak amongst you should be strong with me until I have secured his rights, if God wills. And the strong amongst you should be weak with me until I have wrested from, from him the rights of others, if God wills. Obey me as long as I obey God, Allah, and his messenger. But if I disobey Allah and his messenger, you owe me no obedience. Umu ila salatikum, yurhamukum Allah. So he says, stand for your prayer. May Allah have mercy on you. So we can see in his very short khutbah, he, he tells the companions what authority is that you support. So you support the weak. You stop the, the oppressors. And also, he was saying that, you know, you only follow me if I follow the Quran and Sunnah and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, that was his khutbah. Abu Bakr al-Sadiq radiallahu anhu, he lived like, uh, we're going to see, for two years after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, so Abu Bakr was born in Mecca two years after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the year of the elephant. After the year of the elephant, uh, two years and six months. He was given the name of Siddiq because I think you already learned all of this anyway, just to summarize, uh, to remind you, he was called a Siddiq because the truthful one, because when the, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went on the night journey, he did not hesitate and to believe in this and people were coming to him and he trusted fully in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was the first of the right Khalifa, so these are his virtues. He embraced Islam without hesitation. And uh, he freed um, many slaves as well. He freed eight slaves. Uh, amongst them was Bilal and Amar ibn Yasir and four women as well. Four men, four women. He was a ten Ashar and Bashar of Jannah, ten promised paradise. He was the most faithful and ascetic of the companions. So he was read, he was a great worshiper of Allah. He used to fast. Like one day Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Who's fasting? He said, I am. Who went to a funeral? He said, I did. He said, Who um you know, visit a sick person, he said, I did. So he, he Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever, whoever says, I've done all of that in one day, then he will definitely go to Jannah. So his Iman was amazing. Also, um, he was the most beloved to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after uh, Aisha. Uh, from the, from, he was the most beloved man and the most beloved after Aisha. Um, also, uh, many people accepted Islam through his efforts, like Abdurrahman ibn Awf, Uthman ibn Affan. Many companions accepted Islam through his effort. He was obviously the first believer, first believer from the man. He only reigned for two years, two months, and 14 days, and he was the only one who died naturally. Okay, all the others were martyred or they were killed. Also, uh, we just saw that he was able to um, fight these power empires, the Sassanid, I think that's how you say empire, and the Byzantine empire, these two empires, the lands that we saw that he went into. Um, what did he achieve in his, uh, his accomplishments in his leadership? He fought the battle of um, the war of apostasy, battle of Riddah. So after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died, some Arabs, okay, and amongst them was Musaylim al kadab or uh, uh, people who used to follow uh, f fake uh, prophets, so some of them, from those areas, they said, we're not going to give zakah anymore. And Abu Bakr said, we will fight anybody who says they're not going to give zakah because they, uh, uh, they, there's no separating between zakah and, you know, the five pillars, and so on and hajjah. So 
Abu Bakr radiallahu uh, Umar ibn Khattab was obviously his advice and he was saying maybe, maybe we shouldn't fight them, they're still Muslims. And then he quoted a hadith, he's saying, he said, um, whoever says la ilaha illallah, his blood comes becomes haram to me, his wealth and his money, unless he breaks, you know, the, the conditions of la ilaha illallah, illa bihaqqiha. So they broke the conditions. Someone says there's no sakah that's going against the Quran Sunnah. So uh, Abu Bakr, then Umar agreed with him and then they went into this war. Many companions died. Some of them say about 70 uh, who've memorized the Quran. And that leads to another dilemma. We're going to look at that, inshallah. Um, so also he sent out, sent out the army of Usama ibn Zayd. So Usama ibn Zayd was the son of Zayd. Um, we know that Zayd grew up with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Usama also. Um, Zayd was the freed slave. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to love Usama, but Usama had great qualities. So he made him uh, a commander uh, a, for an army that was going to fight the Romans. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died before he sent him. So uh, Abu Bakr was being told he's too young, don't send him. Send uh, someone else because amongst that army there's Khalid ibn Walid and you know Umar ibn Khattab and other. So Abu Bakr said, "I'm not going to change him, and I'm not going to be, you know break uh, um, you know I'm not going to break this promise or what Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam wanted to do." And even he said, "If I was taken by a, a wild beast, that I'm still alive, I will still give the command." So he, even if I'm, I'm the last person living, I will give the command. So that's what he achieved, and it was very successful. Um, also, he collected the Quran. Uh, what is the collection of the Quran? So when many companions died in the battle of the Ridda, um, now people who've memorized the Quran are dying. So Umar ibn Khattab came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said, you know, these people, many of the memorized the Quran were killed in the war of the apostasy. And Umar advised him, he said, make the Quran to one mushaf or put it in one place, because it was written on separate uh, materials. So Abu Bakr said, how could I do something that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't do? And he said, um, it is khair and you're saving the Ummah, otherwise this Quran will be lost. So after Umar repeat coming back to him, he accepted and he made uh, Usama, in the, uh, Usama, he made yeah, Usama, no, Zayd, Zayd ibn Thabit. He made Zayd ibn Thabit in responsible for that. And he said, and even Zayd said, how could I do this? And then Abu Bakr said to him, you, and you used to write the Quran at the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he was one of those who memorized the Quran. Uh, and so they needed two witnesses to come uh, to testify every material that the Quran was written on. So it was written on separate, separate parchments. Uh, it was written on Bark, it was written on bones, it was written on stone, in, uh, engraved in stone. All that was collected and it was kept, it was given to Umar and Umar gave it to Hafsa. So it was kept in the house of Hafsa. Okay, so this was something very important he did. He united the Muslims and protected the, the will of Allah. He looked after the Quran. Also, the, his conquest, we already talked about his conquest. So he conquered the Le Levant, which is uh, Syria and um, and basically the Sham, he co conquered Iraq as well. He sent Khalid and Walid to Kufa in Iraq, Rabaidi ibn Jarrah to Hummus, which is Syria, Homs, uh, Syria. Yazid ibn Abi Sufyan to Damascus, Dimashq, and Sharahbir ibn Hasna to Jordan, and also Amr ibn As to Jerusalem. So he started sending all these soldiers because. At that time, it was either you conquer or you are conquered. Uh, that's how it was, was. So if people say, you know, Islam spread through the sword and all of that, that's, or, that's not true because life was a part. Life at that time was, you know, it's either you expand your borders or people are going to expand, uh, they're going to come into your borders. And this war was always like that, like we saw in the battles of Badr and Uhud. And also, um, most of, the, they, were, they were also spreading Islam as well. Most of these places now the Muslim countries it was because of these efforts. Okay, uh, so that was the leadership of Umar al Khattab Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He died a natural death, and before he died, 
he called people and he wanted to, he, he chose Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu in his writing to, uh, to be the next leader. He put it in writing. He told somebody to write and they wrote that uh, with, the long, with some other words. He also said that Umar, which is the most important thing, that he will be the leader. So Umar was selected in that way. Inshallah, in the next lesson, we'll cover um, the history of Umar al-Khattab. But obviously, I'm not going into you know a lot of stories or how they were generally. Uh, the main idea is for you to get an understanding of the history, the history, the timeline, and some of the, the important events, so you can get an overview, uh, uh, inshallah, of the Khalifate and the Islamic history. Allah alam.